This is the LK5 Pro, the first 3D printer I've reviewed from Chinese company Longa. It's a large i3 style machine with quite a few decent features, but is it the 3D printer you've been longing for? <laughs> Let's find out. How's it going guys, Angus here from Maker's Muse. This machine was sent to me from Gearbest free of charge for purpose of review and came well packed in a large box with tons of foam packaging. I'm tempted to start pressuring companies this year to reduce their reliance on this utterly unrecyclable expanded polyethylene foam and shift to a more environmentally friendly option like formed cardboard. So let me know if that's important to you in the comments below. Anyway, the machine requires some basic assembly but it's not all that difficult. The frame design is a little odd, however, it sits on these stilts with the power supply and electronics under slung, but overall, I quite like it. Unlike Longer's other smaller offerings, this Pro model comes with reinforcing rods to triangulate the frame and add much appreciated stiffness. This is handy because as these i3 style printers get larger, they also get quite floppy. Although the rest of the assembly was straightforward, I highly recommend taking your time fitting these rods correctly as they can actually easily force the frame out of square. I used a set square to measure, adjust and check and now they're tight, I have a perfectly square frame. Well, at least as close as to square as I can get because the Y axis is on a separate central rail. But anyway, it's pretty good. The LK5 Pro is the largest offering from Longer currently with a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters in the Z, but to be honest, its spec sheet beyond that is fairly standard. It's an aluminum V slot and roller construction running a single Bowden extruder, which takes 1.75 millimeter filament and has only one Z axis step motor, which seems to work okay, but is at the size limit in my opinion. I would have much preferred to see two Z axis motors. The gantry sits on these fine little stilts as I mentioned with the underslung generic power supply and the sheet metal housing for the control board and electronics. You just have to take a moment to admire these cutouts and how just totally random they are. Triangles for the bottom and then these propellers, flowers. Regardless, they're really nicely powder coated and there's no burrs in sight, so it's kind of amazing. <laughs> Inside you'll find insert control board here. Well, clearly someone hasn't updated the script. Great, okay, I'll just update that in post. Thanks, intern, but no, in all seriousness, the control board used here is actually quite decent. It's only 8-bit, but does have removable TMC 2208 stepper drivers, and has quite a few features I've not really seen before, like the use of Dean-style connectors for power in and heat bed. Longer has also coated the plugs in this odd red glue to help keep them from vibrating free. And finally, I disconnected the hot end heat cartridge to test for thermal runaway. And I'm happy to announce this printer does successfully detect thermal runaway conditions and ask the user to restart the printer. Well done Longer for actually implementing this properly. And thanks to those silent stepper drivers, this machine is really quiet. It's actually pretty much silent. Uh, it's one of those machines that is so quiet you forget it's on if it wasn't for vibrations passing through the surface that it sits on. The still design makes it a little challenging, but if you put this machine on a concrete tile or foam mat, all you'll hear is fan noise. The bed level and nozzle height is assisted manual. Again, nothing special but you get a plate of ceramic coated glass for the print surface, which is pretty nice. You first saw this material on any cubic 3D printers and it holds prints down while hot, but then lets them pop off when cold. And it does a really good job so long as you have a really good first layer. The only real issue with this surface is if the printer loses power, although this machine has power recovery, if the surface cools down in the interim, the recovery will probably still fail because the parts will probably still pop off the print bed. Also, it takes kind of quite a while to cool down and if you're impatient like me, I much prefer a removable flexible print surface that you can just take off and flex the prints off straight away, but it works fine and some people prefer this. It's just not my first choice. Finally, the interface. One of the features on the LK5 Pro which grabbed my attention in the first place was this fancy looking color touch screen. And in person, it's quite good. It's pretty small, but usable and has a well thought out range of functions for preheating, filament loading and unloading, as well as a decent print selection menu. Few gripes though, the metal frame housing it is so crazy thick and overkill that it makes navigating on the edge of the screen a little bit awkward. And is it just me or is the UI a full on clone of the Ray's 3D interface? It's not a carbon copy, but the colors and icons are well, let's just say 
heavily inspired. You can load G-Code onto this machine with a micro SD card, which is a bit fiddly, but even more fiddly and annoying is the location. It's right at the back here, where the control board is housed, next to the odd angled spool holder. It's not a deal breaker for sure, but having a USB port or full size SD slot at the front would have been so much nicer for usability. Anyway, okay, onto the prints. Logger packages their own slicer on the SD card, and by own slicer, I mean super outdated Cura 15, but they've stripped all of the Cura info out of it, except for this tiny disclaimer, which in my opinion is kind of cheeky. And look, I'm gonna start giving companies a hard time for using this old Cura like Thomas started to do, because I'm testing the Wamhow D12 right now, and it's using the updated latest Cura with their profiles. So there's no excuse using an old outdated slicer. It does produce okay prints, but I ended up rolling my own slicer profile in Prusa Slicer using a modified Ender 3 profile. And I'll link that in the description below if you'd like to try that out on this printer. And in terms of general print quality, it's okay. The machine clearly has tons of potential and I really do like the mechanical design and small prints, simple prints like these phone charms came out really good, but Cooling is clearly the biggest letdown here. All it has is this odd little fan duct on one side and it's miles away from the nozzle. And this leads to poor print quality in areas of steep overhangs like on this, the bow of this 3D Benchy. If the previous layer however has enough time to cool, like on this Colosseum model, um, it resolves really good details. But the final nail in the coffin for this cooling duct was the lattice cube torture test. It did complete, to be fair, some printers can't even get this far, but you can kind of guess which side was facing away from the cooling duct. So anyway, I downloaded and printed an upgraded fan duct from Thingiverse and tried another Benchy just to see how much of a difference it made, and there is a clear improvement with the improved fan duct. It's not fantastic, but it clearly is better. And when paired with the Prusa Slicer profile, it really started to show the capabilities of this 3D printer. For example, the Gaia Anderson Cat showed really good layer accuracy with the back, it just looks so smooth and clean. The legs printed correctly. It's not fantastic, but it's a heck of a lot better than before. And the biggest change I saw was with my clearance and tolerance gauge show before I did any changes, I got down to 0.3 millimeter clearances but now I've done the changes, I managed to get all the way down to 0.15 millimeter clearances, which is a perfect score and pretty much the best you can expect to get clearance wise out of an FDM 3D printer. So in my opinion, the LK5 Pro from Longer is a decent printer, which is about 90% there out of the box. Like I said, it's got great mechanical design and good electronics, but will benefit greatly from an upgraded hot end and part cooling fan. And by using this fan duct, it's almost like Longer just gave up at the end. I mean, this is 3D printed. They could easily upgrade and improve it. it the parts are on Thingiverse, the users have created them to improve the printer. It just confuses me that they did all this effort onto the printer and then used this duct. If you can pick up one of these for the sale price of 350 US, I think it's a really good value as a step up from the quite good but smaller and less featured end of three and similar smaller i3 style machines. I am annoyed that Longer let their own machine down with the lousy fan duct choice, but if they could improve this detail of the printer, it'd be quite a serious contender for the budget i3 category, because they seem to be quite good at designing and building 3D printers otherwise. If you'd like to pick up a Longer LK5 Pro, you can find purchase links in the video description below, and if you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing. Here on Makers Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.